to see you tonight. Glad you're here. Looking forward to God speaking to our hearts. Right side, you're doing well. You got many people over there. Left side, Marie. We got to help. It's just not right. <laughs> All right. Come oh, on. Yeah. All right. People are going to wonder what the world we're doing. But anyway, that's okay. They already wonder what we're doing. Right? That's right. All right. Let's pray. Father, we're grateful for who you are. Thank you for this day that you've given us, that we're able to celebrate Father's Day. I do pray that uh, all the men that are fathers were able to uh, just have a good day today. And uh, we just uh, pray that we would not be an absentee father, that you would help us, uh, Lord, to honor you, serve you, and do what uh, uh, you would have us to do. Thank you for these two psalms that we'll look at tonight. And uh, we pray that uh, you would bless the preaching of thy word, uh, the singing, uh, any testimony that may be given. Or just whatever uh, takes place here tonight, we want you to get glory and honor and praise. Thank you for the good afternoon you've given us so far. And uh, we just pray, God, that, uh, again, that you would uh, continue to move in our hearts. And, uh, send us revival, Father. Help us to turn away from ourselves and, uh, and just deny you to work. We pray this in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen.
song. All right, uh, Sam, pray for us, please, sir, if you would. Our Heavenly Father, what a privilege it is for us to call thee our Father. We have been reminded of the words Father's Day all day, and what's been on my mind is that it's the day when we know thee as our Father. We know thee as compassionate and gracious and loving. <coughs> tender in mercy, but we were reminded this morning in Sunday school that the day is coming when this world will not know thee and its Father, but as the Almighty God who in righteousness will bring judgment for the sins and iniquities that abound in, in the earth. And we know that that is true and that it is a part of thy being and a part of who thou art. But we gratefully and humbly thank thee that you have made yourself known to us as a father. That you will never leave us nor forsake us. We thank thee that you have set an example to us through your being who you are to show us how we should be. And Father, we, um, even as the choir sang tonight, I go to the rock when I'm discouraged and I can't remember all the words, but I, I kept thinking, I wish it were so. Father, I wish that I could come to thee more Come to thee first. Come to thee with all of my problems, all of my desires and needs, and expect you to care for me as you long to care for me. And I realize that it's not you that's the problem, but it's me. So, Father, I thank you that uh, you are who you are, as Bobby often says. You Thank thee for who you are. We thank thee for what you've done. Thank thee for giving us your son and for giving us the Holy Spirit and giving us the word of God, giving us fellowship with fellow believers. And on and on, the blessings go. Father, we realize too that you are a God that disciplines us when we need it and corrects us when we need it. And sometimes we shy away from those times and don't appreciate them as we should. But we pray that you would help us to mature and grow so that those trials and those testings and those times of discipline might have their effect in our hearts and lives that we might be not barren, but fruitful in bringing honor and glory to thee. Our request tonight is that we would love thee more and give ourselves more wholeheartedly to thee. Help us to pay attention to thy word tonight, to hear what you have to say to us, and then make it a part of our lives. We ask it in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. I failed to mention this morning, I forgot, uh, I had it on my mind about Charles Stanley and how I'm pretty sure his father died at a young age. It may have been he left him. Uh, I can't remember how all that worked, but I remember him saying as a young boy, I can't remember how old he was, that he took uh, God as his father and uh, really changed his life. And uh, boy, boy, that's what we all should do. Uh, even if we have an earthly father, God should be ultimately our father and uh, of course the Bible tells us we should call no man father on the earth meaning by that the true meaning of God the father uh, you know in reverence type and uh, certainly our father should represent the father but anyway uh, also tonight we're going to be looking at two psalms 
um, interesting Sims prayer again, uh, the character of God and uh, who he is and, and how we should be like him. Uh, that's exactly what Psalm 111 and Psalm 112 are. They parallel each other, probably written by the same uh, person. And uh, Psalm 111 is all about the character of God and his work. And then all uh, chapter, uh, I mean, uh, Psalm 112 uh, is all about uh, the man of God and his character and how he is to be. And so hopefully, hopefully we'll get through both Psalms tonight as we look at those. Uh, but anyway, don't forget choir practice 4.30 uh, next Sunday and then graduation service uh, in the PM service uh, next uh, Sunday night. Again, appreciate you being here tonight. Look forward to God speaking to our hearts. <coughs> Take our hymn books once again, please, and turn to page 430. There shall be showers of blessing. Mm -hmm. Let's stand and sing all four verses, please. Page 430. There shall be showers of blessing. This is a promise of love. She does have a bad tooth, and so just pray that uh, uh, the, be able to get her into the dentist uh, this week as we call tomorrow. Just pray for that if you would. I pray for this young man I mentioned to you this morning, uh, Yush. Uh, just pray for him, if you would, for salvation. And all those on our prayer list that don't know the Savior, uh, be uh, uh, mowing uh, Miss Amy's grass uh, this week. Uh, so just pray that uh, be able to talk to her some more about the Lord. Just pray God open. Continue to open the door there and there'll be open communication. If you would, Linda McKeever is our 
missionary of the month, so we're going to pray for her. Uh, a lot of needs there uh, for the children and the ladies that she ministers to. Uh, so pray for that if you would. I uh, did not mention it this morning, and uh, I'm trying. Uh, Sam Holt, um, pray for him. Uh, he's got, uh, uh, again, a, what was it that you said to me? mass on the back of his neck, so we're really concerned about that. Yeah, it's Randy said it's got fingers that are going internal through the access point that was created in his skull during the first surgery, mm -hmm. and it's touching his brain. Okay. Um, so they're saying possibly surgery this coming week. Um, but even Randy, when he came back from the MRI Friday, was saying how God had kind of already been working things out because this MRI was his, he had gotten where he could do annual MRI. Excuse me, when did Michael and Hannah get back? Uh, about supper time tomorrow. Supper time tomorrow. All right, so pray for them as they travel back in. You need uh, to change Hannah's name in the bulletin. I <laughs> sure do, don't we? <laughs> Sorry, Randy, Lisa. Sam mentioned it. Y'all told me to keep it in there. <laughs> <laughs> other prayer requests tonight? All right. No prayer requests. All right. Certainly pray for these. Uh, Randy, help you pray for us, please, sir. Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you that uh, we can call upon your name tonight. Thank you that we can call you, Father. Lord, we pray tonight that uh, these requests that have been made, that you would grant your will be done in each and every case. Or not necessarily what we want, but what you have in your plans. Father, we do pray for the service tonight that you bless our pastor, Father, just anoint him fresh and new tonight, Father, just that he might break the bread of life freely. Father, we do thank you for the service this morning. Father, we pray that uh, you just visit with us tonight through your Holy Spirit, Father. All right, turn in your Bibles to Psalm 111. And again, we'll be looking at uh, Psalm 111 and uh, Psalm uh, 112 tonight. Uh, probably this would be a good uh, Father's Day message. And so it happens to fall on Father's Day on Sunday evening. And as we look at uh, God, the Father, and uh, our Lord, then we look at the man of God in Psalm uh, 112, how he is... Uh, of course, uh, to to respond. Uh, but maybe you have a testimony that you'd like to share with us uh, tonight before we get into the word. Yes. Um, I just really want to praise the Lord for everything He's done through the Bible study. Mm -hmm. um, we're actually coming up on the last week, so the seven weeks that's gone by so quickly. Um, but we had twelve ladies. And not always, you know, that many coming just because of different schedules and whatnot. Somewhere between 7 and 11 usually. Um, but God just really, really um, blessed and, um, I don't know, it, it just was, was a really good time of fellowship and encouragement. And um, several, you know, said just what a breath of fresh air it was, um, just that they could um, learn more about him, and it gave them a time, you know, a specific time in their in his word each day, um, and they looked forward to it, and there was encouragement, you know, amongst all the ladies, um, and so it was just a really um, huge blessing, and I just want to thank the Lord, because it was all him uh, worked everything. Me. 
Yes, Grace. I have a couple. Um, last weekend, we prayed for no rain, and it rained <laughs> um, for Hannah Glenn, and I was like, I mean, I know you can do that, Lord, like, you're God, but please take the rain away. Like, this just isn't convenient for wedding dresses or bridesmaids. Nothing. Like, it's just not that great. And um, I, I prayed, and he took the rain away. I'm sure there's other people praying, too. Um, and then we were praying for no wind and no rain, so it's two floating lanterns. And the floating lanterns were kind of a flop in some ways. They are gorgeous, but there was no rain, and there was no wind. And it was just really a fun time, and it was hilarious. So just seeing God answer those prayers and, like, show up in those ways because I've been praying so much for those things. Um, and then yesterday, um, I was talking to a friend of mine, and wasn't really sure about their walk with the Lord, so I was able to talk to them just kind of randomly yesterday and to hear them talk about what God has done in their life, how God has saved them, um, was just really powerful and just very simple. Um, it was just so encouraging to my heart because I've been praying for this person for a long time. And something that they told me that meant a lot to me was, they said, darkness is really, like it has, I can't remember exactly how they said it, but they were like, it's, it's powerful. Like it has a pull. He goes, but, but God has, but, but Jesus Christ is stronger than that. And, um, and they knew that because they've experienced it. They knew it personally. Uh, it's just really sweet to just hear that and testify with them um, over how God is working in their heart. It was just, it was just really sweet gift from God. Amen. Amen. Thanks for sharing. <clears throat> still appreciate, you know, uh, prayer and kind of grace before we eat, but that was a blessing to him, but it might have been more blessing to me that he came and, you know, expressed this, uh, mm -hmm. that he appreciated it, uh, mm -hmm. we there needs to be more of that in our country. Yeah. So you have to talk about, uh, you know, the Bible says what's right and what's wrong, what's right will be wrong. those encounters very often. And I've never had it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Amen. Good, good. Appreciate you sharing that. Anybody else? All right. You ready to dig into the Word? Amen. That's good. Psalm 111. Um, really, <coughs> did not plan to do this, but uh, I believe this is what the Lord would have us to do since these are uh, two psalms that go together. And really, uh, you can't have a man of God without God, right? Amen. And uh, Ian Thomas always likes to say in his messages, it takes God to be a man. It takes God to be a man. And we're living in a day, of course, and we all can get caught up in that, um, of entertainment and all these other kind of things. And, uh, boy, we just need to get back to the Word of God. Uh, I was reading uh, earlier today on Facebook. I didn't go into detail of what they were writing. It was saying uh, 10 things in the Bible that will show you that the Bible is not boring. And, uh, you know, because a lot of people think the Bible is boring. Uh, if we didn't think it was boring, we probably would read it. You think? Right? And uh, But we know there's a battle there. But here in Psalm 1, uh, 111, um, uh, the psalmist, uh, again, believing that he... Uh, uh, he wrote Psalm 111 and Psalm 112 
is going to uh, begin the psalm, uh, both psalms, in the same way, and that's praise ye the Lord. Amen. Uh, hallelujah again, and that's that's really what that means there. That word praise, it's uh, the Hebrew word uh, halal, and uh, where we get our English word hallelujah. And uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with saying hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And uh, we need to uh, learn how to praise and thank God. And uh, here's how the psalmist starts this off. He says, praise ye the Lord, or hallelujah ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. Again, we've talked about this time and time and time again and how important it is to be not led by your emotions and not led by your thought process, but to be led by your will. Your thoughts will deceive you, your feelings will deceive you, and you'll begin to develop a pattern in your life that's not gonna be good. You need to exercise your will, you need to choose, regardless of the circumstances. I asked the young people this morning, how many of you read my text uh, that I sent out? And not one of them raised their hand. <laughs> and that was kind of defeating. No, it really wasn't defeating. Not everybody reads them, and that's okay. It's not, uh, well, it's meant for everybody, but not everybody reads them. And he was talking about the difference between joy and happiness. And what this author said was the difference was sorrow. <laughs> you see, when sorrow comes your way, you're no longer happy. Right? That's just the way happiness is. But boy, Sorrow oftentimes shows us true joy that we have in our hearts, even though we're sorrowful. Amen? That's hard to, to grasp, but it's just truth. And uh, so it's not your circumstances, it's God. Amen? And who he is. And so he says here, I will praise the Lord. And again, Lord in capital letters, speaking of a sovereign God, one that's over all a self-sustaining God that needs nothing from us, amen, and he's in control. And so we can praise him no matter what the circumstances are. And then he tells us how he's going to do that. And the Bible speaks of this quite often, with my whole heart. Now, folks, listen, if we're honest, we put, our, we put a lot of our whole heart into a lot of things, right? Right? And we just came through, uh, Grace was talking about a wedding, and you guys have been through a wedding, and man, y'all put everything into that, right? And really, the truth of the matter is, nothing wrong with that. Obviously, you want to try to do your best for things like that, but ultimately, our best and our whole heart should be given to the Lord in everything. And we're just talking about a wedding here, but we, we can talk about all kinds of things in our lives that we, 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 we put so much emphasis in, and really, the emphasis in our lives should be God, who he is, amen, what he is doing. I'm sitting up here thinking about preaching this, and I'm thinking, Lord, what is my purpose? Really, folks, we live our lives, and I'm not real sure if we even know what our purpose is at times in our lives. Now, this is honesty. You know, and really that's what we should be because if we don't, we're just going to keep going around in circles and we're not really going to know who God is and know what our purpose is. And really, we've talked about this before. Our purpose is, again, to praise God and worship God and, and, and bring pleasure to God with our lives. And so the psalmist says here, not only will he praise God, will he uh, uh, hallelujah to God, uh, he's going to do it with his whole heart. And then notice he says here, it's not, now it's great to praise God, you know, just like Richie said there. And he's probably prayed over his food, not 50 billion times, right, Rich? <laughs> but a whole lot in his life. And never had the experience of somebody coming up and, and talking with him. And he said, I didn't say it, Richie says, probably a better blessing to him than the guy coming up to him. Why? Because, listen, it's enjoyable to see other people enjoy God and the things of God. Amen? And so the psalmist says here, he says, in the assembly of the upright. This is where he's going to praise God. Now, please, please, please don't take this in the wrong way. I've got to preface that. Okay? 
<laughs> Y'all ready for this? Don't take it in the wrong way. You know what Charlie said to me last week? Charlie came and visited the church. Now, Charlie's just a man just like you and I, folks. Okay? You know what Charlie said when he left the church? I, I made, he didn't eat with us, and I asked, went back out and said, hey, you want to eat with us? You had that little fellowship last. And he said, no, no, he was on his way. And he said, he said, man, Brother Bobby, man. He said, the church ought to have been shouting, praising God for that message and from the word and what that psalmist is saying. It, it should have been shouting. <laughs> now, I'm not getting on you. I think I might be. But there ought to be, there ought to be some emotion <laughs> when it comes to God, shouldn't there? Now, now, look, like, not everybody says amen or hallelujah. And I'm not, look, I'm in no way, shape, or form looking for something fake, right? I mean, I'm not looking for you just to say amen and hallelujah, but there ought to be some excitement when we talk about God. You know, and that's what he was saying when he left. He said, boy, there should be more excitement. Man, all those things that were being said about God and who he is and, and what he's done, and right? Amen. But listen, you know where we are, folks? Y'all know where we are, don't you? I'm not talking about physically, but we're in, we're in this day, Sam. We're in this day. We're no longer in that day. We're in the fun day. That's where we are. We're looking for fun and excitement. Right? But listen to me, folks. Fun and excitement dies. It never lasts. We need something lasting. Right? True joy. Regardless of our circumstances. Moses, <laughs> you're looking at one that's I'm the same way. That's why I'm standing up here saying, Lord, I've fallen hook, line, and sinker for what most men fall for. Thinking it's something else other than you. That's going to bring joy and love and peace and what you've intended. I think, oh, we're probably not going to get finished tonight, but I think about God in the Old Testament. You know, most people still live in the Old Testament. Most religions really focus on the Old Testament, what they would call the Old Testament God, you know. But you know, God always intended to be a father to his children. God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He always desired to be a father to his children. Now, the Old Testament saint, they could not view him as that because they were in a different, di different dispensation, say that three times, and, uh, than we are. But today, we live in that dispensation where we can cry out to God, Abba, or Papa, Father. Today, I had a, a real joy this afternoon. For some reason, uh, my, my, and some of you don't even know what this is, but my bitmojis, these are pictures, cartoon pictures of you that you send out. And my very first one today that popped up for Father's Day, I guess, it said, I love you, Pops. That's what I called my dad. And so I was able to send that to my dad. And uh, my dad put a smiley face back to me and said, man, that looks just like you. Thank you, Bobs. I love you. And uh, Pops to me is an endearment term to my dad. It's like the Bible says there in Romans that we can call our, our father Papa. Amen. It's an endearing turn, Abba. And uh, what, what a blessing it is to be able to do that. Uh, the psalmist here, he couldn't even do that. And yet he's still praising God. Amen. But he says it, it's in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. That's why I said to you about what Charlie said. Again, folks, I understand. Look, you may be praising God inside and, and all of that. And so I'm not condemning you or anything like that. I'm just trying to tell you, I, I do believe there probably should be, if something's going on the inside, a, a little more outward expression. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Maybe I'm wrong, okay? I don't think I am. I'm pretty close to Germex on it. Uh, but, you know, there really should be. There's outward expression in other things. Is there not? When we're joyous or happy or whatever you want to call it. So shouldn't there be with God? And so here the psalmist, first and foremost, that's what he says. He says, praise the Lord. He says, I'll praise the Lord, but I want to praise the Lord with other people. Is there anything wrong with that? 
for all of us here to just praise the Lord together and have excitement and enjoyment. Uh, really, the, probably the better word wouldn't be excitement, would be enthusiasm, amen, for God and who he is. And then notice what he says here. This is what he's going to tell us about God, who he is and his works in, in verses 2 and following. And, and you're going to see that uh, works and work and works. It's going to be continual all the way through this psalm. He said the works of the Lord are great, aren't they? Hey, Amen. The works of the Lord are great. Just as making of this world and the making of mankind and all the different things. And then the ability, again, that he gives. I was reading something this afternoon uh, with Tozer. And, you know, he said the animal world they have no opportunity, folks, to get right and, and enjoy God the way that we do. But one day, the Bible tells us plainly, folks, in Romans chapter 8, the animal world is waiting on the true redemption of man and God to bring all that together so they can be truly able to do what they do, <laughs> whatever that might be. They're waiting for this curse to be lifted. But God gives us opportunity. Amen. To praise him, to thank him. He said, the works of the Lord are great. Salt out of all them that have pleasure therein. What do you enjoy? What is it that you enjoy? Do you enjoy the works of men? Or do you enjoy the work of God? My goodness, over the past several days, goodness, folks, the, 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 the uh, uh, what do you call that? <laughs> Uh, the sun, as it's uh, out there, Lisa sent these pictures, incredible. I took incredible pictures uh, sitting out on my uh, porch there. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful, unbelievable scenery. Lisa sent a picture of her dogs enjoying it. I mean, they saw it. They were looking out there. And uh, my goodness, if a dog can enjoy the, uh, the sun, uh, I keep trying to, Think of what a horizon and all the things there. My goodness, can't we praise God for his wonderful creative works? Man, amazing. If you ever get the chance, and we still need to work on that, Randy, on doing the uh, pictures. <laughs> it's just coming to my mind of the, the Ark and the uh, Creation Museum. I mean, folks, they got a, a, a thing there with just bugs. All kinds of bugs from all over the place. And, it's just amazing the bugs that God created. You see, God created bugs. Didn't he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did somebody else create them? <laughs> I mean, there's all kinds of just weird looking creatures that you don't want to run into, especially when you're sleeping at night and one crawls on you. And uh, but boy, you look at these things, you're like, wow. You say, what purpose do they have? God has purpose for everything. He's God. And, and so the psalmist says the works of the Lord are great, but they're sought out. Amen. Do you look for God's hand in everything? Is, are you looking around, meditating upon God and his handiwork? Amen. God help us. Some writers said, boy, we just need to sometimes go out at night and, and just sit there and stare at the stars would help you a little bit. Amen. David did that. And uh, boy, he called that God's finger work. Amazing, isn't it? God help us. Then he says this in verse number three. He said, his work is honorable and glorious. And, excuse me, and his righteousness endureth forever. Now, it doesn't seem like it right now, does it? But his righteousness is going to endure. And uh, boy, oh boy, in our lives, as you're going to see in, in Psalm 112, we're to be representatives of his righteousness. It's not our righteousness. It's his righteousness. Praise God that God imputed, put into us his righteousness. Amen. Otherwise, we would never be able to live glorious and righteous lives. But he's a glorious and righteous and honorable God. Everything that he does is right. Amen. Now, folks, we often question him and what he does. And again, we're blessed that he allows us to even question him. But again, it's not a question, again, in arrogance and ugliness, but just trying to understand. And God, praise God, understands that too, because he made us 
And he does want us to understand certain things, but ultimately he wants us to understand who he is and what he's doing and that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. Then notice this. He's continually on talking about his works. In verse 4, he said, He hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. <clears throat> Amen? He, he has made his wonderful works to be remembered. We, we need to think about, you know, instead of thinking about whenever we go through problems and difficulties, wouldn't it be good to think about the good things that God has done in our lives? Amen? I was kind of last night stunned with a question. I can't really go into detail of the question, but I was kind of taken aback by it. And, it, you know, it thought about, I thought about the wonderful work that God has done in my own life by, first of all, saving me and then teaching me throughout my life, often failing and flailing and all those other kind of things. But God bring me back to the point that he's doing a wonderful work. But yet I didn't come up in the greatest of, of home lives. I didn't come up in, in, in things, you know, a Christian home. That's not what I was born into. But God had other ideas. And God used a lot of things in my life to keep me away from certain things. Amen. God's doing a wonderful work in our lives. If only we could see that even in our failings. As I said to you last week, that you'll never have success without having failure. We're all works in progress. And God's work is glorious. God's work is wonderful. And we need to see that even in our sorrow, even when we, we can't see it. We need to understand that we, were, we need to go back and remember all the good things that he has done in our lives. Amen. Especially in times of deep sorrow and depression. We need to think about it. Notice that he adds to that in the latter part of this verse. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Amen. Aren't you glad that God is lovingly kind and gracious to you? Amen. And full of compassion. He's ready and willing to have compassion on us. Remember what I said to you this morning about the prodigal father? That's an amazing passage of scripture, folks. Now, you just be honest, folks. None of us act like that when our children go astray and they go out. We point fingers and we say, this son had, had taken his, his inheritance and he went out and he wasted it on uh, living uh, in sin and with harlots and all kinds of mess and he ended up in the pigsty and he was, you know, ready to eat that pig slop and, and he remembered, listen, you know what he remembered? <laughs> he remembered his father. Now, don't you think for a minute, folks, that his father was not gracious to him before he went out and left. He knew how his father was. But you know what? He also recognized that he was a sinner and he had messed up and he had walked away from all the goodness of his dad and of his father. And he wanted to go back there. And if you remember what he said, he said, he said, I'm not worthy to be your son. He said, make me make me like one of your hired servants. <laughs> but you know what? Listen, folks, when you're a son, you're always a son. You never change being a son. <laughs> you're always a son. Amen. And so that could not change, even though in his riotous living and all the other things, you know who recognized that most? His father. He was always his son. Amen. Folks, listen, there's nobody like God. Have I told you that before? He's full of compassion and mercy. And when we mess up and go away from him, his desire is to show again God is not desirous, folks. Do you think God? Now, God is a God of judgment. Is he not? Yeah. Well, folks, listen. That God's desire is not to show judgment. His desire on mankind is to show mercy. Amen. 
But if God, if man will not receive it, God has to give them judgment because that's what they deserve. That's what I deserve. That's what you deserve. But if you'll believe and receive, amen, if you'll just come back to him wherever you are, he will show you loving kindness and mercy. He's full of compassion. You know he understands better than anybody else. Amen. And yet, folks, just as we've already said, we go to somebody else other than him. Now, I know we will get to that other song. And, uh, but boy, we need to stay right here because we need to understand before we're ever a man of God and we're men and women of compassion, we need to know him as the God of passion, of compassion and, and uh, uh, mercy and loving kindness. So the psalmist says, again, he, he, he hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. He wants us to remember him who he is and what he has done, and we can come to him. He's full of compassion. He said, he giveth meat unto them that fear him, that have reverence for God. You realize there is a, a, a slavish type of fear that, there, there, that mankind has, but this is not what he's talking about here. God's not uh, talking about, or the psalmist, about a slavish type fear, but uh, really a, a, a fear of reverence. Now, obviously, but knowing that who God is and that he is a God of judgment and that he does discipline, but, but ultimately, it's a reverence for God and a respect for him. Do you realize our world has totally lost that? We have lost, folks, listen, we're living in a world. Now, folks, you have to understand the world that you live in, I think. Well, I don't think. I know you do. When people call for the things in America that they're calling for, there's a reason behind it. You understand that, don't you? That, that people are naturally bent to go against authority. And so when they say we, they, they, don't, they don't want police and they don't want all these, listen, they're only speaking their sinful heart. And you guys, again, we all get upset about all these crazy things. But I'm telling you, what we need to get upset about is that we're not witnessing to these people and we're not telling them about Jesus like we should. Amen, preacher. Now, that, that, that puts you on the spot, doesn't it? See, we can complain and bicker and all these other kind of things, but who are we telling about Jesus on a daily basis? Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, Right? Amen? That's what we should be doing. It's talking to people about the Lord and who he is. Now, again, I'm not saying they're going to listen. I watched this little thing, and I don't agree with everything this guy says, folks. So don't think that I do. It's called Wretched Radio. Anybody ever heard of that? Wretched Radio? That just sounds bad, doesn't it? Huh? Yeah, but it's not bad. It's good. It's, it's Christianity straight up. And uh, this guy goes out, and he, he preaches the gospel, and he stands for truth, and and um, uh, accountability and all these other kind of things. I can't remember his name right now. Todd Friel is his name. Just popped in my head. And, uh, but, but again, good stuff. He's out there preaching the gospel, telling people about their, their eternal destination and, 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 and how they were born, enemies of God. And this dear young lady, I guess maybe in her mid-30s, comes up and she's a Christian, you know, and she says, I don't like the way that you're doing this and, 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 and all these things that you're saying, you know, you need to be loving. That's what she says. You don't need to be telling people uh, about this judgment and all. And, and, and he says, well, where are people going to go when they die if they don't, if they don't get saved? She says, well, they're, I believe they're going to die and go to hell. And she said, so we shouldn't tell them? You know, we shouldn't explain to them that they're under the curse of, of, of God and condemnation. And yes, we're to love them, but the loving thing to do is to tell people honestly. And, but ultimately, this lady was weeping, saying, you're not representing God for who he is. She had a different idea about who God is. You know, this guy was not doing it in a mean-spirited way. He was trying to tell people the truth. But listen, you can't come to God until you first realize that you're a sinner in need of a Savior. And like he was trying to tell her, she was saying, you just need to live your life. She said, like Jesus did. <laughs> and, and of course, his reply is back. She said, she said, she said, Jesus didn't preach. Did Jesus preach? 
But she, she obviously ain't reading her Bible. <laughs> Jesus preached everywhere he went. <laughs> He said that the difference between, and this, is, this was so good. He said, when Jesus preached, he said, everybody else sat down and listened. <laughs> everybody, they listened there. He said, here, people are ridiculing him and throwing stuff at him and saying all these other kind of things. No, they didn't do that to Jesus. Well, I, we don't know. They didn't record everything that, where Jesus went. We know what they did to him at the cross, though. They spit upon him. They, they, they did all these things and but boy, we, we, we need to see again, folks, our responsibility again to share the, the, the gospel message to people. People are going to naturally go away from, from, uh, from God. And, and uh, you and I need to understand. They need to hear what God has done for us. Amen. When you testify, it's what God has done in your life. How are you going to tell somebody about Jesus if you've never been fed? Right? I like what George Law used to say when he talked to people. He said, I'm just one beggar uh, 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 sharing with somebody else uh, how to get bread. That's all we are. God help us. Then he says this. He said, he will ever be mindful of his covenant. Now, of course, he's talking about the Old Testament covenant here, what God has promised his people. And you're going to see in, in chapter, I mean, uh, Psalm 112, uh, about what God does for those that are righteous. And of course, obviously dealing with outward things and different things like that because that's what God has promised them. Blessings, uh, outward blessings, material things, cattle and land and all those kind of things. God will ever be mindful of his covenant and his promise. He says here in verse six, he said, he has shown his people the power of his works. Amen. Have you seen God's power in your life? Right? Boy, oh boy, the, 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 the people of Israel would always go back again to, because this was handed down to them, the crossing of the Red Sea, the crossing of the Jordan, uh, all the things, the, the plagues that God sent in Egypt, and all the different things that God, uh, the, the water out of the rock, and uh, all the things that God had done, the, the miraculous power of God. And just again, we've talked about this before. The 40 years in the wilderness, that's some of the most incredible scripture in all the Bible. That these people just lived out there and uh, had nothing except what God provided. Is that not true? Amen? Clothes, shelter, all these things. Uh, how did all this work? <laughs> it was the miraculous power of God in what he did there. Amen? But you remember how they were, right? God sent them that great manna and fed them and all that, and that just wasn't enough. They had to have, we want meat, we want this, and, and we're always like that. We're talking in the book of James and, and how it talks about patience brings this perfect work and that God brings us to a place. And it actually says this, folks, in James chapter 1 and verse 4. It says that God wants to bring us to a place where we want nothing. Really? Yeah, read it what he says he says that's what patience does that's what trials and tribulations do well that's trials and tribulations bring patience and then he says let patience have its perfect work and that means maturity and that we that we begin to want nothing but god it doesn't mean that you're not going to have nothing folks it means that you don't want anything but god because he's enough amen all these other things will not bring true satisfaction. He has shown his people the power of his works that he may give them the heritage of the heathen. <laughs> you see, folks, listen, the world says this. You know this one. You know this motto, right? Get all you can and what? Yeah. Yeah. Can all you get. That's the world's motto. God says, give it away. He says, man, he'll, he'll make it more. Press down, I think the passage says, good measure and all these things that God says, as you give, you'll get more. And really, we said this before, blessed are the meek, for they shall what? Inherit the earth. All this belongs to us anyway. Now, folks, I'm not against recycling. Do I look like a person that's against recycling? I'm not. But you're not going to save the planet. Now, I got, now isn't it amazing? I got to do, do my duty. 
right? I, I got I gotta man, we we would we would recycle more than we would tell somebody about Jesus. That's pathetic. Amen, preacher. It is. That's sad. Now I'm not telling you, you shouldn't recycle. Emma, is that what I said? No, but I, I tell you it's more important to tell somebody about Jesus than save a plastic bottle. Amen, preacher. See, people don't like that. Why? Because it, it, it hits you. We live in a society, folks, that we love the animal world and we love mankind. Yes, sir, preacher. That's right. Y'all realize, I don't know if I ever told you this. I might have and I might not. You know they came and took my dogs. I'll tell you about that. Somebody's driving in the neighborhood. Now, it's been years ago. I can tell you now. The animal control people came and took my dogs. You know what they said? They said people were driving around. They said, your dogs are out there laying in the snow. I had a shelter over top of it. And, uh, you know, and, and, and they said, you need to build a floor in here. You need to build a floor. That's what they told me, folks. They said, you need to build a floor. I said, when I'm to build? They said, you need to build today. It's got to be done today. I said, well, you go ahead and take the dogs. It was a sad day. I had to let him have my dogs, you know, because people were driving around. They said, man, that guy, he over there, he don't care for his dogs. And I asked the guy, I said, man, I said, uh, what do the deer do? What do coyotes and all them do? Do they live out there and that? He said, man, you don't care. Listen, you build all this stuff, the dog in the lay where he wants to lay. Mm -hmm. He's a dog. Amen, preacher. Amen. You see, our problem is we care more about the animal world than we do about people's souls. Mm -hmm. Now, listen, I know there's going to be animals in heaven. At least it's going to be horses. Amen. Right? But it ain't going to be your horse. It ain't going to be your dog. Mm -hmm. Now, folks, listen to me. I'm just trying to help you. Souls are more important than animals. Amen, Amen preacher. Amen. Come on. Where's Charlie when I need him? <laughs> right? God help us. Amen. This world belongs to us. Verse 7. The works of his hands are verity or truth and judgment. All his commandments are sure. Amen. They're right. We need to understand that. And again, the, the, when you, the psalmist is going to talk about the man of God when we get to that next week. And uh, But anyway... The works of his hands are truth and judgment. Everything he does is right. All his commandments are sure. They're right. He says in verse 8, they stand fast forever. And he tops that off with, and ever. And are done in truth and uprightness. Amen? Everything God does is right. Everything God has said is right. All his commandments, all the things that he does, they're going to last Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Amen. God's word is going to stand. And therefore, God's people should stand on God's word. Amen. I have I said this to the Sunday school class this morning. I'm not a Buddhist. I'm not a Hinduist. I'm not a, I'm not a Jehovah Witness. I'm not a Mormon. I'm not a Catholic. I'm a Bible-believing Christian. I believe with all my heart that I can give people the word of God and I can leave them with God and God can speak to their hearts and show them truth. I don't have to convince them of anything. I'm not looking for people to follow me. I'm looking for people to follow Jesus. Now, they need to follow me as I follow Jesus. I understand all that. But I believe in the word of God. Amen. I believe in the power of God. I don't have to trick people. I don't have to deceive people. I can just give them. Paul said it like this. He said, we do not handle the word of God deceitfully. We give people straight up what God says in his word. And we can trust God to do the work. Amen. The Holy Spirit of God will take the word of God and teach people who he is. Amen. Folks, do you believe who God is? Yes. It, that comes from the Bible. It comes from the Holy Spirit teaching you that. And if he taught you, he can teach everybody else too. Amen. So we can trust God, right? I can leave God's word in somebody's hand and know that the Holy Spirit will do the work. Amen? And tell people, I say, look, you ain't got to believe me. 
Amen. It's not up to me to try to convince people to believe me and what I'm saying is true. I believe God will show him from his word it's true. Amen. Why? Because it is true. Amen. It never changes. Nobody discovers truth, folks. Truth always is. Amen. Truth is God and all that he has made. Amen. That's what the psalmist is saying. He says he stands fast for everything else. Everything else will fall. Then he says in verse 9, he sent redemption to his people. Amen. Folks, listen, do you realize? Now, again, he's speaking Old Testament covenant. He's, he's speaking of the exodus and things like that for his people. But again, for us, God bought us back. Amen. Off the slave market of sin. Amen. We've been redeemed by the blood of the lamb. Praise God. God has sent redemption to all of his people. And that's including us. Praise God that he did. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Amen. Holy and reverend is his name. There's nobody like God. I've already told you that. There's nobody like God. I was talking to a man down at uh, Doug's Auto. My friend Doug that works on my cars. There's a man there that's... Uh, uh, again, that his, it's his um, something. <laughs> he's the guy that's in the office. He's his office manager. That's what I'm looking for. Thank you, whoever helped me. And uh, I was talking to him. And he he said he said, "How you doing, Reverend Shut?" That's what he said. This was two weeks ago, one week ago. And uh, I said, I said, I'm, I'm doing all right. I said, but I said, just favor. I said, you know, don't call me reverend. No, that's not what he said. Sorry about that. He said, he said, hey, what should I call you? Reverend, pastor, bro, whatever. And I said, you know, not reverend. I said, I, I believe that's just for one. And that's for God and God alone. And really, that was kind of the end of the conversation until this past week when I went to pick up my car. I had no idea what this guy was going to say. It's kind of what you have there, Richie. This is what he said to me. He said, man, he said, you know what? He said, I thought about this week what you said about not being called Reverend. He said, you know what? He said, man, you're right. He said, we shouldn't be calling anybody Reverend. That, that should be reserved for just God. He, he researched this out, folks. I'm like, praise God. That's wonderful, isn't it? Just all of a, of a thought there. Now I, and I told him this. I said, I don't go in. If somebody puts your name and says Reverend Bobby Shutt on the little thing when you do funerals and stuff, but they ask me, I'm telling them. And I believe every single pastor, whatever else other than Reverend, they should be called. Because, listen, only God is Reverend. <clears throat> Amen? Now, that may just be a pet peeve of mine. And that's okay. But it definitely got a man thinking, you know, about, hey, we ought to think more about God being reverend than a man being reverend. And really, the truth of the matter is, the psalmist saying is, reverend and holy is his name. Can I ask you something? Is reverend and holy Bobby's name? Yeah. Go ahead and give me the thumbs down emoji. Reverend and holy is his name. Amen. This is what the psalmist is. He's again speaking of who God is. He's speaking of God's works and what he has done. And he says, holy and reverent is his name. Amen. And then notice as he's going to lead up into this next psalm, he's talking about God, who God is and all of his works. And then Psalm 112 is going to talk about the man of God and what his work should be like. And as Sim already prayed, his work should be like God's works. Because if they're God's works, it's God doing the work in the man. Amen. Notice what he says here. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Having a respect and a reverence for God. And folks, listen, we all lose that. We do. 
Because we, we get into our own world and, 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 and we, we lack that respect for God and we need to ask God to help us with that. But it's the beginning of the wise man's life. He said, a good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Do you think God wants us to understand why he asks us to do certain things? Of course he does. Now, there ought to be, folks, again, that we do what God would have us to do because he says so. Amen? But what God says is right. And, and God has no problem with us investigating the scriptures. Not trying to prove God wrong or anything, but to know that God is right. God spoke highly in the book of Acts of the Bereans, did he not? They just didn't accept. He said they were better. They were greater. Boy, they, they searched and see uh, uh, to see if what Paul was saying was right. Amen. And any preacher worth a grain of his salt wants his people to search the scriptures to make sure their preacher is preaching right. Amen, right? It's what the Bible says. And there's nothing wrong with coming back and having a good, wholesome discussion over the Word of God and what God says in His Word. Rather than fighting and bickering and, and fussing over those things, we ought to be able to have a good conversation over the Word of God. But you know what? We're bent. We're bent on what we believe. And hey, we ought to be strong in what we believe. Amen? Amen? But we ought to know, hey, that hey, if somebody has a question, we go back to the Bible. I'm telling you, you need to have a Bible basis for whatever you believe. And most of what people believe, they believe what they want to believe. And then they form the scriptures around that. Amen, preacher. It's just the way it is. And we all can be guilty of that. We need God's help with that. And so, I mean, I've learned a lot of things about some of the things that I've believed down through my life. I wish I could tell you what I'm trying to study right now. But I can't do it. I really can't. But I am looking into this, and I wish I could tell you what it is. Maybe one day I will. I think I will in the future be able to. I just don't know if I'm going to be able to or not. <laughs> I got you all inquisitive. But anyway, a good understanding. Have all they that do his commandments. There's a reason why God requires things of us. Now, I understand all, all, uh, the, the, at the end of the day, we just need to obey and do what God would have us to do. But God has a reason and a purpose that he calls out his people to do certain things. We're, we're going to get into some things next week, I think. We'll, we'll see about that. But the last part of this, he says, is praise endureth forever. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. You may stop praising to God, but there's somebody praising God. Richie, you may, and I hope you don't stop praying over your food, but there's somebody going to be praying over your food out there. And we should continue to pray over our food. Amen. I think that just shows general respect and reverence for God, being thankful in our hearts to God. But listen, his praise will endure forever. All through the scriptures, the Bible speaks of a remnant of people. And there's always, God's going to always have his people, a remnant of his people praising him. Amen. His praise will endure forever. And folks, we're living in that day. You know, I was reading something today, and the guy was just way off on, on, the, on the scriptures of, uh, of the tribulation period. He had the church uh, going through the tribulation and, and being persecuted and in the tribulation period, and that's just that's just not in the Bible. You know, God's going to rapture His church out, but it's going to be just like the days the Bible says, the days of Noah and the days of Lot. But it's also going to be in the same kind of day when Jesus first came, where there was no room for Him in the end. People were just hustling and bustling about, doing their own thing, and they weren't thinking about the Messiah coming the first time. People are doing the same thing today. They're not looking for its return, including God's people. We need to be looking, laboring, listening for the call, 
of his return. But the culture and everything else has bombarded us to think about ourselves and our own needs and all these other kind of things. Really, we need to be focused on God's work. First and foremost, his salvational work in our hearts and our lives and his desire for us to have a relationship with him and see, again, his work, how he's changed us from the inside out and continually wants to do that changing process. You do not find this out by not reading your Bibles. You don't find this out by not communing with God on a daily basis and seeing his works everywhere you go, meditating on those things. God, oh, by the way, uh, 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 Lynn, you'll have to change the title to that message. I had the title to message. The message is A Fixed Heart, and, uh, and that's for the next week's uh, song. And I don't have a title for this one other than God is Great. Amen. Let's stand to our feet, have a word of prayer, know the form of invitation tonight. You take the words that have been said, and you go home tonight and meditate upon them. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for who you are. Thank you for a great Father's Day that you've given us today, that we can focus on you, our Father. Cleanse us of all sin, Father. Continue to help us, Lord. We all fall short. Oh, God, help us, Lord. We're asking, we're seeking, we're knocking. We just pray, Father, tonight, thy will be done we leave this place. It's in Christ's name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Oh.